mankind has endeavored to recreate what God created in the garden through utopian cities. My grandparents were a part of a scheme way back when uh, garden cities were popular and they bought a commercial lot and a residential lot in Florida. Uh, the only thing that uh, really turned out there was the developers turned out a lot wealthier. We see that uh, the Agenda 21 wants to force people into cities. Isaiah chapter 5 says, Woe to them that build house to house. We know that that's a problem. As of late, we see that big cities have been kind of home to virus and vagrancy. With the defunding of the police, these are going to become very, very difficult places to live, battlegrounds. And um, it makes you wonder, why are we destroying ourselves? Well, if you go back a ways, you'll see that um, those in charge and individuals have decided to leave God behind. And we thought that we could go without him. And we have for a while. And now we're paying the consequences. We're reaping what we've sowed. And we don't really like the harvest. In our passage today, we see that it's Revelation 16. And the verse is 19. And it says, And the great city was divided into three parts. The cities of the nations fell. A great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So in this section, we see that Babylon falls, and so do the great cities. And if we didn't already know that we seem to be self-destructing as a people, it would make God look really bad. But I think that the, the author here has a really good analogy about going on a trip, and the kids not obeying and so the parents probably the father would tell them this is what's going to happen if you don't obey well our heavenly father is telling us this is what's going to happen i think obedience is really key i think we need to pay attention i'm not exactly sure how you're taking all of what's going on in our world but maybe you'll get to a point where you'll spend more time in prayer more time in contemplation more time drawing near to him and I like the last thing that's said here if we truly understand and believe what the future holds for those who reject God then we should try harder to reach them. Read a, uh, a small snippet by a pastor in the South, and he was talking about an individual that went to the prison to share Christ with an individual that asked him to go visit their family member. The individual in prison um, rejected the person, rejected Christ, and used profanity to drive them out and on their way out, there was another young man that said, I'd like to hear what you have to say. That young man, his heart was broken. He accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, asked if the man could come back and visit him. As the pastor turned to walk out, the first young man said, I'd like to hear. And so he was able to go back and share Christ with him. So it's not too late. There are those that want to hear. May God bless you.